So yeah, welcome this morning to everyone on this uh, beautiful sunny Sunday, um, a mothering Sunday. Um, yeah, it's lovely that we can meet together again um, in God's presence. And on this mothering Sunday, many of us think, thank God for the women who've had the greatest impact on our lives and celebrate their unconditional love and sacrifice. But for others, we know Mothering Sunday brings mixed, mixed emotions, especially for this year when we've lost lots of mums. It brings mixed emotions and it can take real tenacity and trust in the Holy Spirit to give love and to feel loved. So in this service, we remember before God families of all kinds as they navigate the joys and challenges of family life and we ask for his blessing upon them. So let's say together this opening prayer. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So being um, Mothering Sunday, um, we asked uh, Little Fishes just to share what they've been um, doing to celebrate that. We can have a look at that on the next slide. So these are some photos of a card that they were making. I don't know, hopefully you can work out what that is. Um, they were making little teacups on the, on the front of the card and adding in a tea bag, which I think is a very creative and a great idea. So um, lots of mums this morning have been waking up um, with a cup of tea on their card. And these are just some quotes that the children made about what, um, what they liked about their mums and things that they did with their mums. And uh, I think I just as you just read those, I think it's um, they're just very special, aren't they? That um, who what mums are, who mums are, what they do. And it just reminded me, really, if you know, the the love that God lav lavishes on us through his son, Jesus, and that um, each one of us has that love from God. And he will just delight in us being together and um, just giving us that, that love. So we can move on to the next slide. This is a verse from 1 John. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. So yeah, Heavenly Father, that we are your children and thank you that you love us each one so deeply and that you just delight when we come into your presence and we just pray now that by your spirit we would know your presence with us and that you would be our comfort in this on this day amen so we've got a short video now just reminding us of mothers in the bible and the role models that they provide for us today and then we'll have a time of um short prayer Happy Mother's Day, Sarah. After waiting to have a child for so many years, you must be overjoyed to have Isaac. Today is about you and all those who are still waiting. Happy Mother's Day, midwives of Israel. You risk your own safety to ensure the survival of countless children. Today is about you and all those who care children and call it work. Happy Mother's Day, daughter of Pharaoh. By welcoming Moses into your family, you showed so much love. Today is about you and all foster and adoptive parents. Happy Mother's Day, Naomi. You walked with Ruth as a friend and cared for a child as your own grandchild. Today is about you and all grandmothers and extended family who care for children. Happy Mother's Day, Hannah. You let go of Samuel, even though it hurt you. Today is about you and all those whose children are not living with them right now. Happy Mother's Day, Emma. Life didn't go as you had hoped, yet you found peace and worth in your service to God. Today is about you and all those experiencing heartache at how things have turned out. Happy Mother's Day, Lois and Eunice. Your faithful 
changed Timothy's life. Today is about all those who are playing a part in raising the next generation. Mother's Day is about you, whatever your role might be. Thank you. And um, now we're just going to, um, I've asked um, some people, um, Luke, Francesca, Mark, Dave and Mary, and Mary to lead us in this prayer of um, celebrating, saying thank you to God for mothers and just praying for, um, asking God to be with us all today. Thank you. So Luke, if you can start. Kind of look. God of celebration, who rejoices with those who rejoice, we pray for those who bomb Mothering Sunday is a time of thanksgiving and joy. God of compassion, who weeps with those who weep, we pray for those for whom Mothering Sunday is a time of heartache and pain. God of community, who calls the children to come to him. We thank you that your love abounds for families of every kind. God of comfort, who gathers us as a hen gathers its chicks. We thank you that your love surrounds the disappointed and hurt. God of every circumstance, we bring our thanks and praise that we belong to your family as your beloved children. Amen. Amen. And we say together, we draw near in worship to Amen. our Heavenly Father yeah. with full and thankful with hearts. Full and thankful heart. that, that we belong to his family and to his family. family. All deeply loved, loved by, by him. him. Be Amen. Amen. So let's sing um, this. Uh, we've got um, a couple of songs now as we can just, um, just be drawn into God's presence as we worship him. There is nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, love. I taste it and see of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone, your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God. What our hearts long for To be overcome By your presence Lord Your presence Lord Your presence Lord Your presence Lord Let's go back to the first and second verse There is nothing worth more than we'll ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, love. I taste it and see of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone 
in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come love this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Lord, your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Surrendering all, surrendering all. Find me, Lord, as you draw me near. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I surrender. Seeing grace unfold, I hunger and thirst. I hunger and thirst. I'm stretched wide. I know you hear my cry. Oh, speak to me now. Oh, speak to me now. I surrender. I surrender, I want to know you more, I want to know you more, I surrender, I surrender, I want to know you more, I, I want to know Stir within my soul, 
Yeah, Heavenly Father, we just thank you that, um, thank you for the love that you'd lavish on us. And we just pray that now, that if, um, for all those who want to know you more, whether you've known um, Jesus for all your life or just recently, he wants us to go deeper with him. And so just as we were singing that song, May that be your prayer from your heart that you we want to know you more. And Lord, have your way with us. If there's anything that you know that um, sort of stops, stops you from wanting to know Jesus more or to spend more time in his presence, Lord, we just um, surrender that to you now, Lord. And we just say, come, Lord, and take your place, rule our hearts and our minds, that we may become more Christ-like, and just help us to know you more. Amen. Amen. So Kim is going to give our re bring our reading, and then Vicky's going to uh, bring God's word to us this morning. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Good morning. The reading today is from John 3, verses 14 to 21. <clears throat> Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because the deeds of evil, their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly for what they have done has been done in the sight of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Kim. Let us pray. Next slide, please. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our will, that we may be ready to serve you and to bring you glory. Amen. Next slide. When was the last time that someone asked you, do you want to hear the good news or the bad news? And what did you ask to hear first? Next slide. For me, after a moment of hesitancy, I will usually ask to hear the good news first in the hope that the good news is going to overwhelm the bad news or better still, that the good news is that there is no bad news. Next slide. Well, here is some good news. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but
that have everlasting life. The very best news, in fact. This is very possibly one of the most quoted verses in the Bible. And why is that? Well, maybe because it tells us all we really need to know about God and how we can have a relationship with him. It also tells us who Jesus is and what we need to do in response to hearing this remarkable piece of good news. In many ways, this is the one verse that is the blueprint underlying the whole of the gospel story and God's perfect plan. Next slide. Can you now remember when you last heard some good news and how you responded? Not much of that in the last year, you may think, though things are now hopefully improving. How did you react when you heard that the first vaccines were, be given, were being given the go ahead or that the friend's baby had arrived safely or that a health diagnosis was not as bad as you feared? A sigh of relief, maybe. A smile. A whoop for joy. Maybe even tears of relief. Next slide. And now, can you recall when you first heard the good news? For each of us, there must have been a time when we did not hear, live in the knowledge of John 3.16, even if that is a dim, distant memory. And even then, when the full truth of what God did for the world was first shared with you, did you even recognise it immediately as good news? Did you even understand it, what it really meant or what it meant personally for you? Next. Oh, actually, no, that's fine. I must have heard the good news when I was quite young. My parents were regular churchgoers and I was brought up as a Christian. My first Bible was called the Good News Bible, and in fact, I still have it. However, as I reflect back on my very early faith journey, this knowledge of what could be called the ultimate truth was more of a slow burn than a moment of great joy perhaps more a knowledge of the head rather than the heart, theory rather than the relevance of real life. So I can't say that I whoop for joy or that I really understood just how amazing this message of good news was conveying. Next slide. And then in my early twenties, I joined an alpha course. There I not only heard the good news, I encountered it. The Holy Spirit came into my life, and if I was, if you like, born again. And the good news did then become the best news that I had heard or will ever hear. And I laughed, I cried, I fell on my knees, I worshipped. It transformed everything I knew. I changed my job, I changed my ambitions, I changed my desires, I changed how I led my life, how I related to everyone and everything around me. In this reading that we've just heard from John 3, 14 to 17, who was the person that Jesus was sharing this good news with? And what impact do you think it had on him? If we go back a few more verses into John chapter three, we see that Jesus was talking with a Pharisee called Nicodemus. If you go back one slide, Kim, it's perfect. Nicodemus was a member of the Jewish ruling council. John places this meeting shortly after the cleansing of the temple and links it to the signs which Jesus performed in Jerusalem during the Passover feast. The meeting took place at night as presumably given his position Nicodemus was hoping to visit Jesus in secret. Rabbi, he said in John 3, 2, we know that you are a teacher who comes from God for no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. This statement suggests that Nicodemus was familiar with Jesus, most likely respected him and recognized that he indeed came from God. Nicodemus knew of the miracles that Jesus had performed and he probably heard many of the truths Jesus spoke as well, all of which seemed to have triggered his questions as he tried to understand who Jesus really was and by what means he exerted such godly power. 
Nicodemus was a well-educated, well-trained, and one gets the impression a very righteous man. He was part of the Jewish elite and accustomed to relating to God through strict adherence of the Jewish law and through religious works. Therefore, the message that Jesus had for him, that all his years progressing faithfully in Judaism, that this accounted for nothing, must have been very confusing and at worst very disturbing. And he may have even considered it to have been bad news. Nicodemus's religious fervour and behaviour for all of its commitment, though very possibly laying the foundational groundwork, still did not have the strength to carry him to salvation. Next slide. You may recall from an earlier conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus, that he very bafflingly told Nicodemus that in order to see the kingdom of heaven, he had to be born again. Next slide. To relate to Nicodemus's personal faith experience at the beginning of this reading, Jesus makes reference to a piece of Old Testament scripture from Numbers chapter 21, saying that just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. This was a reference to the bronze snake that Moses raised up when the Israelites were wandering through the desert and oscillating between rebellion and repentance. On one occasion, when the Israelites chose rebellion, they were punished for it in the form of venomous snake bites. To receive healing, they had to look at the snake on the pole. And in response to this act of faith, God then healed them. Each time, in fact, that the Israelites rebelled, the Lord's judgment would come. Moses would then intercede on their behalf, and then the Lord would respond with mercy. And even then, in Jesus' time, the people of, of um, Israel were still rebelling. But of course, this time, the intercessor was to be Jesus, and the mercy that came through him was to be everlasting. So of course, Nicodemus would have had no idea what Jesus was actually referring to in this conversation. He didn't understand that Christ would quite literally be lifted up on a pole, just as the snake had been. And that it would be Christ's death and resurrection, not well-spoken prayers or good deeds, which would bring him life in God's kingdom, saving him and indeed us from our sins. Though perhaps the penny did start to drop when Nicodemus heard about Jesus' death on the cross as he helped Joseph of Arimathea by providing the embalming spices for Jesus' burial. Next slide. This reading from John then goes to tell us how we are not to live our lives and what will happen if we choose to reject Jesus. It tells us the bad news, if you like. Verse 18, who, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. Next slide. However, crucially, as verse 21 then tells us, whoever lives, to, lives by the truth will come into the light. To be able to stand blameless before God then is to choose to believe in Jesus and to live by the truth, coming into the light and rejecting the father of lives. God sees everything that we do. And despite that, those who believe in Christ's saving power need to have no fear of standing in the light, in the sight of God. We need to have no compulsion to hide in the darkness because we are ashamed of our deeds. This is because it is our belief, our faith, which is the substance of our relationship with God and not our behaviour. We may make mistakes, but Jesus does not. We may be imperfect, but Jesus is perfect, so that no matter how much in our humanness we get things wrong, it is our faith in Jesus which makes a difference. God's forgiveness is based solely upon what Jesus did for us on the cross. With any acts performed in our own strength, whether for good or for ill, being of no consequence. Our salvation is based on what Jesus has done, not what we have done. Next slide. 
verse 17 reassures us that Jesus was not sent to condemn, but to save whoever believes in him, that it is God himself who chose to remove the veil between us and him, so that when we come to him through faith in Jesus Christ, his forgiveness, his forgiveness is needed only the once and is for all eternity. For we are God's children, we belong to his family, we are loved by him as his children and we are part of his perfect plan. As too is his forgiveness of us part of his plan that, that has been fulfilled through Christ Jesus. Further, as part of God's plan, we who with unveiled faces should radiate his glory, that as we are brought into a relationship with God by Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we can now boldly look upon the resurrected Jesus and in seeing him for who he really is, be transformed into the image of Christ. Therefore, as Christians today, we should come to an awareness that our story has become God's story and our plans have become God's plans. And as we share with others about our relationship with God, so we're also sharing the transformative power of God's story, giving glory to him while also being a powerful, by also be, but while also be, being powerful witnesses and a source of encouragement to others, both Christians and non-Christians alike. Once we have given our lives to Jesus, and are transformed through the Holy Spirit and continue to be so by our faith in God, our very life stories become the very act and substance of sharing the good news. And so, next slide, as Peter 1, as 1 Peter 3.15 reminds us, always be prepared to give an account for the reason for our hope and to share the good news. Next slide. Let us close in prayer. Praise you and thank you, God, for the sacrifice Jesus made for us so that nothing can separate us from you. May our story become your story, Lord, so that we can confidently share this good news with all those that we meet in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. We come together To, to praise, thank, and bring supplications to our Lord. God of love, passion, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all, all the days of our life, through, Lord, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for this country and for the world in these uncertain times for wisdom and tolerance. We continue to pray for our country as it slowly opens up from lockdown. We lift up all the families that have lost loved ones during this pandemic. So many lives being mourned and the heavy feeling of loss. Lord, we give thanks for all those working in NHS vaccine distribution, schools, and other essential services. Be with them as they serve the community. Lord, we bring before you our church family. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you revealed Jesus as your son. May we recognize him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Lord Jesus, we bring before you those who are ill, those in the bulletin, the prayer sheet, and, and others known to us. Lord Jesus Christ, who cured the sick and the lame and raised the lowly, reach out through this time of prayer to all those on our hearts, into their minds, their bodies, and their spirits, and heal them of all that harm. Touch their lives and ours with your healing power. Within our church, Lord, we bring before you this week that those who would normally be doing, doing flowers, 
We thank you, Lord, for the time and dedication given by our church flower team to make the church look beautiful, especially at our events which are run during this, the restrictions. We look forward to the day when we can all see for ourselves the church in full bloom. And Lord, we bring before you our other local churches and other partners in Christ, thinking particularly today, Lord, we bring before you great and little Hallenbury, which is led by David Herrick. We pray for all who serve there and for their spiritual growth through this time. Lord, we pray for the world and worldwide church, for those who suffer extreme poverty. With so many families in our own town now facing poverty due to the, the pandemic, we pray that these families will be provided for, that no one will go hungry, that we will we'll all share what we have when we can. We pray for other, those countries in the world which have lived in extreme poverty for many years. Lord, help them and those who make decisions that affect their situation. As Jesus said, for the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost. And we, we trust in your promises. In our local community, we pray for the homeless. We pray for streets to homes and hope for Harlow. Lord, we bring before them for the continued support of those, for those who are homeless. We pray for those who find themselves without a home who will be treated with compassion and love. Lord, we bring before for you the, the, those people for continued financial support to the charities that support those who are homeless. Let us, Lord, to help those who need help. Lord, we bring before those involved in shaping of young lives. We, give thanks, we thank God for the sacrifice and commitment of teachers, for all those involved in serving children and young people in education. We pray that all might be be nurtured and cared for, that every needed resource should be made available, that all lives can flourish, even in these difficult times, and that no, no one will be overlooked. And Lord, we thank you that children are able to go back to school, and we pray that that, that will be safe and work well. And finally, we finish with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your Amen. kingdom come, your Amen. will be done on Amen. earth as it is in heaven. Give us today Sister, our daily our bread. Daily bread. Lead us not into darkness. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Thank you. Um, so we've got, um, we're going to have shared virtual peace, and perhaps we could imagine sharing and giving each other a bunch of daffodils as well as though we were in church. And just thinking of those quotes that Little Fish has said about their mums um, in Isaiah, it said, as a mother comforts her child. So I will comfort you. And yeah, it's just a lovely image to think that that's um, everything that those little fishes children were saying about their mum and and how they see their mums. That's how we can see God. He is um, there to comfort us and he wants that intimate, special, personal relationship with us to, to save and um, yeah, wherever we are with him, whether we know, you know, whether we've said yes to him um, or as I said before, it, it might be a long time ago. Just thank you that he is here to save us 
and uh, he longs to to be um, in our lives. So during this song, we can just surrender to him again. So thank you, Kim. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, kindness of the same. The whole of nations. Oh, say he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. Of the rock salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find all my fears and fears. Be on my life again. I give my life to Father. Everything I believe in. Now I surrender Say He can move the mountain My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save For in Of the rock salvation He was a God in the grave the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light, let the whole world see. We're singing by the glory of the risen King. Say, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Of the rock salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Say, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. For in of the rock salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the The whole world see we're singing by the glory of the risen king. I think that is. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, we're um, thank you for for um, joining us this morning in our service of worship on Mothering Sunday and I wish you all a very uh, blessed day in in um, in the day ahead and let's say together this final prayer of blessing. May the love of the Father fill our hearts. May the love of the Lord Jesus fill our homes. And may the and may the grace of the Holy Spirit bind us together in love in our families and communities, and may the blessing of God be with us all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. If we can stop recording.